Hi everyone and welcome back to our rugby channel. We are rugby for days. Uh, at this moment, Jock couldn't join us, so wherever he is, good luck to you. He's probably working. But anyway, we just watched the, the two rugby games this morning and it was quite interesting. Uh, Daniel has the, the stats here for us and also the scores. But let's get into the first game. So the first game, of course, was the Rebels against the Reds. Uh, what do you think about the game and, and were you shocked with the scoring? So obviously the, the rules of the new rugby is designed to not give us a draw, um, which yes. is quite shocking to still see an 18-18 draw for a Reds-Rebels game. Yes. Uh, obviously last minute try for the Reds to get back into it, to, to mm. equalize the points. And you know, you wanted to see a penalty conversion or just a drop ball somewhere to just to break the deadlock. But that, that, that's something weird that Australia has done in the recent years and years because it wasn't a high flowing game, it wasn't a spectacular game. Even I think the last five minutes, last ten minutes was probably the most spectacular the game has been. Yes. So it was, and I understand it was wet conditions and it was a bit rainy and it was not not ideal opportunity, but you're a professional player, you have to adapt to every circumstance. Mm. So I think that it's quite sad to see that it was an 18 18 draw still. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I, I, not much to take away out of the game. I actually expected more. Oh yes, I expected more as well. I just think it was uh, with the, the teams and how they played, it was the Rebels to lose. Yeah. And they, they, they lost it, yeah. unfortunately. So it was a draw 18-18. I think there was there was uh, exactly 92 minutes of, of gameplay, if I'm not mistaken. It was quite a long game. You can see the guys in the last yeah. couple of minutes and extra time, they were suffering to stay in. Uh, but yeah, so it was it was theirs to, to lose. I think James O'Connor and the Reds played very well in the last 10 minutes, so well done to them. And also, of course, their captain, Liam Wright, if I'm not mistaken, is his surname. Well done to them. We'll have to see, because now it opens up the log, you know, for who's, who's actually going to be on top. Because yeah. now they, they split the, 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 what do you call it, block points. Yeah, okay. So that's going to be very yeah. interesting. So the scores were 18-18. Unfortunately, not, not one of the, the RFD team got any points on Super Group. Uh, I think nobody got. No, I think nobody picked the draw. So. I also don't think anybody picked the draw. But uh, for those who got off a point, well done to you. Yeah, so let's move on then to the main event. The main event. Yeah. Unfortunately, my team couldn't couldn't hold it, hold the fort. But I want to jump into this one. So, the Blues against the Crusaders on Christchurch. Uh, that's still the the yeah. arena's name. Yeah. <laughs> just trying still to, to yeah. just just uh, getting that right. Okay. Blues came out, their strategy worked. They played excellent rugby in the first half, even leading up to the first 20 minutes of the game. It was phenomenal. I loved the attack, I loved the, the, the gameplay, the overall passion that they had. Their structure was very good. Tutu played very well at, uh, on the back end and so on on, on, on the scrums. Um, unfortunately, and that was my, my biggest fear against the Crusaders, is that the Blues have a tendency, and I spoke to Daniel off air as well with this, they have a tendency to to score once or score twice, they let's say five to ten points ahead, and then they just defend. That's that's what I experienced watching them. So they defend, they defend, they defend. Where Crusaders, they don't do that. They can lead 40 to 5 on the 65th minute, and they will still want to go score. Yeah. They won't just yeah. stop. And so I was very scared about that, but that, that just proved that the Crusaders are on a different level. Uh, they, they ran away with the game in the last 10 minutes. It wasn't even, unfortunately, the Blues for me personally wasn't in it. No. And then also another thing, if it was the Blues' fault or the Crusaders' fault, I can't exactly say who, but Caleb Clark wasn't in this game. Mark Tavia played very well, very well. But uh, Caleb Clark wasn't in the game for me personally. When we saw him in the last couple of weeks, he didn't feature in this game. No. So any any points that you want to make about this because now we know exactly who's the dominant. We, we also we knew beforehand, yeah, but we we had a. Yeah. So we, <laughs> I we, had we spoke about this that I, I didn't mind if the Blues win because uh, that, that means the Blues rugby is getting to a point where they where they can do establish dominance. Mm. But I think that, that the Blues that try to close out games by not not playing the game like like you mentioned just put like in soccer they call it park the bus and yeah they just keep it mm. on just one one zero is fine. And you have to play 85 minutes against the Crusaders. You can't play 80 minutes, you have to play 85. Because they'll go the two, three minutes after the return goes, they'll still yes. keep playing. So they'll never stop playing. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that's what they do. And they're just quality side. And things, and, and fortune favors the ball, definitely. 
fortune favors the bull. Because the Crusaders just looks like they're trying stuff and it's just working for them. Mm. Where any other team will try the same thing and it won't work. But they do it with so much confidence. And then, then you have someone like Richie Mongo who's on a high. You have someone like John, like Jack with you, Brandon Ingram who's on a high. And then you just, uh, Will Jordan, you bring him from the bench up yeah, and he just come on. does something magical. So well done. You, you just have this momentum that you carry. And, and it's, it's the whole Crusader squad and camp that has this momentum and aura around them. And I think they're beatable. You can beat them definitely. You have to play them where they where they don't know what to do, and that is run on Moanga. Yeah. That is that is the thing where I would have would have liked to see someone with the size of Caleb Clark, Oscar Tutu, Nakiri Yohani, who's, who's all big names and big players. Yes. Even Rika Yohani. Just put your lines on Moanga. He's not a bad player, but I think his his defense is a bit lacking. Yes, absolutely. And, and because because the younger flank is is there for Crusaders, I don't believe. They have to work that hard yet because they're in a winning squad. So if you're in a winning squad, you, you tend to slack a bit on the defense or your lines is a bit a bit wonky because you're playing with the rugby. Okay. So you're getting a bit tired. So this is a theory I want I want to see tested in Super Rugby or Rugby Area Taro for that matter. Run on Wanga and see if the, what happens the first three, four times. Do it all day, all day. And see how many times the flank has come covering and how many times you pull in a center or a scrum off. Because that will open up the wings, and then you can bring Caleb Clark once again on the wing, yes. or unleash Mark Talia on the other wing. So that that's a theory I want tested, and uh, you know you need someone like Barrett or uh, who just who just has that that knack of brilliant passing. And I think someone like Dan Cart would have realized this, and if he had still someone like Nonu on his inside, you would have oh, loved yes. doing this. Just boop. oh yes, absolutely. But the one problem is with this game, and like you mentioned, they sh- they should have run at at Richie Moanga. Mm. Is Richie is defending wing on defense? We yeah, which is a clever move because they know he's not good. And exactly. we spoke about this about two weeks ago. Yes, with the Hurricanes Crusaders game, yeah. we spoke about this as well. So for me, let's say it was a couple of days ago. I was in in the Blues camp, and you could have the footage in front of you that Richie will be on the wing. That's perfect. Put Caleb Clark on him. Yeah. That is actually the perfect one. But the problem is that they, they didn't get the ball out quick enough to the wings today. The only way that Mark Tillia actually featured in this game was because of the eyeball and the mishaps. It wasn't a planned move to the wing, most often. It's not that I'm saying they didn't ever did that, uh, but that's still the point. So unfortunately, the Blues didn't take the W with this game, so they second on the lock at the moment, but the Mighty Crusaders, like most of us expected, even on Super Blue, was 88% or 90% to 10 for the Blues. So most people expected the Crusaders to win. So well done to them. Let's see how they do in the next couple of, of weeks yeah. for this competition. Um, but it's going to be very interesting because I said to, to Daniel as well, um, just off air while we were watching the game, the back line of the Crusaders are so dangerously together. I mean, so they're so dangerous that they might just move like that into the the, the all black side. Yeah, I'm not I'm not stating that that's yeah. gonna happen. But they have but good be quality. Crazy. That'll be crazy. They have yeah. good quality players. But the thing is you want that you want to carry on that, that tempo momentum and I think if the blues take this game and they, 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 they play the Crusaders at home for one of their final games, uh, if they if they're round Robin if or team repeats now because yeah. that's what's happening now. So what I would do is just the next four or five games the blues plays. I will establish my game plan and I will force the other team to play yes. my game plan. Because that's Absolutely. what the Crusaders is. That's the only thing the Crusaders Always. is doing different in New Zealand. Absolutely. It's because everybody's playing the same game plan but the tempo is different. Yes. I and agree. Richie Moanga is the key here with someone like, uh, I think it's Brian Hall who's the scrum off. Because if Brian Hall doesn't, isn't stepping up fast enough, because that's how the Will Jordan try to score. It goes right, right, right and just yes. boom, one left. Moanga made all those calls. Yeah. He's just off screen. Well. He's off screen. He just he just directs, and when he wants it, he gets it. And that's the, what how New Zealand featured in the World Cup as well with Bader Barrett and Wonga at the 10, 15, 10. If he wants it, he gets it. Yes. So you have to give more freedom to to your backline and play your tempo and enforce your tempo. And I think the Blues forward did that in the first half because um, they established dominance, and that's how they had the lead. Mm. And then it just slacked off, like you mentioned. They were in front. They had to defend their lead. But it wasn't big enough. You need a, you need at least twenty one points, and then you're still not comfortable against the Crusaders. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, and it's, it's the final score is twenty six fifteen. Uh, just the, if you didn't mention it, so eleven points. I picked fifteen, so my 
prove my ball prediction wasn't that bad. Uh, Stefano was the only one in our in our pool to pick the blues. So come on, out of twelve, we one percent. That's quite a, That's quite a unfortunate. unfortunate. And moving on to the to the surprise surprising game. Uh, yeah, it's now, quite it wasn't, surprising. Not surprising in, in quality, but in teams. Oh yes, the force led fourteen. I think fourteen seven at half time. And yes. they didn't score a try or score points in the second half at all. Unfortunately. But the force came out with a bang. Amazing. And I want to so mention a name, and we, we compared him to Ben Moen, the previous Wallaby and Brumby Aitman. Yes. Uh, Brian Hart Thunder is yes. probably putting up his name to be the number eight. Because we mentioned, uh, uh, what's a red player you mentioned? The six? Pulu. Is it Pulu or? Uh, no, no. Um, um, uh, what is his name? Okay, but my so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, his surname is Lot Lotu. Lotu. Okay. She, she, something. Okay. It's a weird name. Yeah. He's playing for the Reds. Yeah. Playing very well. Yeah. Very well. I mean, he was an yeah. outstanding player yesterday. Because we want to see where the Australians are going. Because they're reforming rugby. So, uh, Lotu, Hooper, and you need an eighth man. Yeah. And Brian Slander is putting his name Number eight. And uh, I don't, I don't, I can't think of any because I can't remember the eighth who played then. But you know, there's there's a lack and there's a there's Why something for him. Well, he didn't. I think he didn't play today. No, no, no. He's he's already. Uh, I think retired or he's in England somewhere. Yeah. Um, he was a big eight. Yeah. I mean, that's so eight. you need you need someone new. And Ben Moen was was the 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 wild card they used, and now yes. the standard can be the wild card they used. He's okay. eligible for. So definitely surprising that the Warriors coming out victorious, twenty three to fourteen. I was one one out. I picked eight. The yeah. final picked six. So he was right until five minutes till the end, and the penalty just damn it. It stole his points, but not a. Uh, a weird Waratah side first off and a different Waratah side second off. Pathetic. It was, <laughs> yeah, let me, let me get it out here. So, no band-aids, rip it off. Yeah, rip it, off. it was pathetic. Um, I think the, the Tars did not play very well and it, it pains me because if I think about the Tars, I think about the golden golden years. Yeah, 2014, 15, 16, or well, yeah. 13, 14, 15. Yeah. With, like, a, like uh, we have said this in previous podcasts or episodes or videos, is you know Hooper, Beal, you know Adam Ashley, Israel Palau, uh, amazing Nick players, Fibbs, uh, Nick Fibbs, you know. So it was. It's quite sad to see a team that can still play very well, but they are not functioning as a unit very well. First yeah. of all, second of all, their handling errors today was shocking. Yes, yeah. And I mean, I don't mean handling errors on stats. I mean handling errors, literally letting the ball go. The yeah. whole time backwards. Not securing it. Not securing time. it. Yeah, yes, that's actually time. a better word. So, I think that was overall very sad. And the only thing that helped them was experience yeah. and a bit more fitness. Yeah. That's that's the only thing that that, uh, that helped them to get the W today. If the force had the experience and the fitness, they would have won. Yeah. They would have won. They played very well. I even said to Daniel, I don't even care if we lose the Super Bowl points because. The force did very well, and I would actually like them to to advance in this competition because what an amazing story it would be the, the team that yeah. is the underdogs basically coming in and and beating the other major teams that are yeah. featuring in Super Rugby. Mm. So yes, and then there's just one thing that I want to mention. I don't know his name. I think it's left or right wing that pushed the guy in air. <laughs> I mean, please go learn how to play rugby first of all, and second of all, you can't do that in the air. Okay, yeah. so. He's like that was shocking. We button. laughed and we said, "What? What's going yeah. on? He should have yeah. gotten a, a yellow card." So, um, yeah, so yeah. basically, what, what what happened in the second half different for me was the Waratahs. The forwards became did, did a couple of line breaks and and smooth passes uh, on the other side of the field, on the left hand side of the field. Mm. Uh, it just seemed like the lock would get the ball and just poop a center, yeah, prop would run a center line, and they just get meters and meters and yes. meters. And that's the Waratahs we knew and the Waratahs we, uh, uh, we, we, we remember. Mm. And it seemed like Carmichael Hunt was in great control of the game. And I mentioned before and in the podcast, I didn't like him at all. I'm not a great fan of Carmichael Hunt. I just don't like him. It's just nothing personal. It says I don't like him. But he did exceptionally well with the 50-22 rule, which came into play this game a lot more. Yes, and well done. And big ups to the ref who, who was aware of this. Yes. And the only negative thing I realized now, and I spoke to Sunday while it happened, that one who was like on the 22 where he would bounce out. Yes. Now the, the, the defending team, well, they're still the defending team, cannot play quickly. Quickly, yes. And really. that is a bit negative if, if if your team walks the line or is out of position and you just get a lucky bounce and bounces out. So it's quite unlucky that you can't play quickly and use that to your advantage. But I, I think it encourages more 
because they scored from the first 53 to the yes. Warriors came back with the, with that try. So, but now I actually have a question on that, and yeah. just hear me out. Because let's this, make it the question of the this, day. Let's make this the question of the day. Okay, let's say I have the presence in mind mm -hmm. to play this rule to my benefit. Mm -hmm. So I'm in my 50. I kick it one bounce out on the 22 opposite. Okay, yeah. so I'm attacking. It's my throw in. Yeah. Okay, it's my line out. Okay, yeah. awesome. We have a game plan. We have a game strategy. I'm going to play it, I'm going to fly up, I call the play, let's say we're yeah. from a scrum or whatever, I call the play outside centre and wing, yeah. be, be, uh, what do you call it, be vigilant. vigilant, be aware what I'm doing, because I want you to throw in quickly, Okay. can that happen, if I, because well, there is a rule that states there needs to be, let's say, three or four players from each side before it should be it's, a line It's out. a it one one each side in the line, in the place where it is. Yeah. In the, in, I in think the it place. might be hooker and then each, each and one line out. Yeah. Somebody, okay. So if I kick, it goes out, it is my throw in. My wing was already there because he yeah. chased if I messed up. Yeah. He gets the ball, he throws in. Can we continue play? That's an interesting question because the, the rule says you can't play quick if it's been touched or if it touched a certain part of a, of, a, of the field I believe or if it's like something like the, the side netting or I don't I don't know if that is a thing with like material object but I know if someone else touches it uh, a spectator you can't play quickly yes, so no, to, you, know, you need to you need to kick to a place where there's no medical staff no other players or cameraman or stuff because it's, it's yes. going to be a weird tactic but it can, can it actually employ it? That's it, a good question. I, I, would, I would like to see someone use this to win a final. Because I remember <coughs> a Frida Priya try against, I think I believe the Crusaders, <coughs> uh, or was maybe the Chiefs Jeez. final, Jeez final, where yeah. they played quickly and he ran through to the corner and scored yeah. because they were slacking. And that tends to happen every, every no matter how focused you are, there's one line of every game where everybody's slacking. Absolutely. And if you were the player where you can change the game, imagine the Blues did that scored a try from that in today's game that'll definitely be the turning point to get momentum back in the game the, and, and if then and if, if it happened in the Australian game where the 2020 rule actually is is applicable yes yeah, it's applicable the, the force could have changed the game plan and dynamic because they didn't use it to their advantage the Waratahs got lucky with a couple of bounces so yes I agree but it will in, in my opinion it won't ever happen with with Australia because the tempo is not the high paced tempo of New Zealand rugby I mean, I think personally, if the Crusaders get a chance to play, in a, well, not get to, we go back to the normal Super Rugby next year, and the Crusaders like have their first game against, I don't know, the Rebels. Mm. It's going to be like a 50 10 score because the Crusaders are playing at such a high pace. I, I, sometimes I think I'm watching on 1.25, literally, real, real life game. I mean, with the try today, just to go quickly back, with the try today were of uh, Riku Iwani, I, I didn't even get my coffee ready to watch the game further, and Richie Mong already got the ball back on the five of the next of, of their line to get a, to get a try. Uh, the attack was insane. Yeah. So I, I think I am trying to, you know, imagine how this type of play with the 50-22 rule in Australia, can it happen, first of all? And if it can happen, Will it ever happen? Because Australia's tempo is not the same. They kick, and then they try and get their lines ready, and then it's the structure, and then Hooper steals the ball. So yeah, you had a good game. You yeah, had a great game, great, by the way. Game. Great back game. To, back to all forms. So oh, yes. what, what, this is what I want to see. Because the force in a position where the Lions was a couple of years ago, when they just got back into Super Rugby, yes. they got thrashed, I think, one year, and then the next year they were in the final for two, two three consecutive years. Yeah, so, building. So... The force has nothing to lose, like nothing. Yeah. Like you are the you entered the game just because of the leader for the team. You have good players, quality players, a big forward back, um, yeah. some experience there as well. Why not be the different team? Why not try stuff? Why not be the guy that, that says we're gonna throw the ball around and we're just gonna make stuff happen? Because that's what the Lions yes. did. I like And that. when they did that, they started gaining momentum and they started playing with confidence and they reached two finals. So the force has nothing to lose. I would like to see them next game try a bit more, and yeah, you because know, I don't think they they are that their wings touch the ball from a backline win. I'm I'm, I'm I, I think there was more interception or weird losses from just, the from the Waratahs. Just the try. Yeah, just the, 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 the try. So, so yeah, it's not it's not I can't remember a brilliant backline win. 
So that uh, why not try it? Because Australia, you have a bigger, longer wings that is quite quick, and you have a big mobile forward pack. So just try it. Just turn the ball around. Uh, personally, I, I thought today they just they just focused on defense mm. because they in the, just in getting the, back into it. Getting back into it, and I mean, you know, in the first half, how many tackles we saw that they drove actually the Waratahs players backwards. Mm. But you know, so you just continued in the second half again. You That's need to, the but they couldn't, unfortunately. Yeah. So the yeah. momentum changed a bit. Yeah. Uh, okay, y'all. So that was that was the third game. The last game, which is only going to be played tomorrow morning, which can be insane, is uh, the Hurricanes against the Islanders. Yeah. So what do you think? Looking for a second win, either of the teams. So it's quite yes. a, quite a weird predicament to be in for both of these teams. Mm -hmm. um, I still believe the Hurricanes are but uh, is going to outgun the Islanders. Uh, we we saw a matchup head to head with uh, Bernard and Aaron Smith. I think the only thing that Aaron Smith has high numbers in is the kicks. Kicks, kicks, more yeah. kicks. So it's like 600 to 800. Yeah. And, and the Bernard had like 55 tries and Aaron Smith like 27. So it's quite quite a big big difference. But you know, the two number one, well, the two, two nines yeah. of, South, of New Zealand going, going head to head, it's going to be a matchup. It's going to be great to see. I would love to see Noah Mape on Leonard Brown. It's going to be good. Um, so I believe it's the the, the the only difference is forwards. Mm -hmm. The actual difference is going to be forwards and game management. How how Smith will manage his backline and how Bernardo will manage his backline. And the reason I say that is because they move Bernardo to wing or to fly or late in the game because I don't think they have a good backup. Yes. So how he how he sets himself up to 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 control the game later on is going to be important because I I think the Islanders will have a knack to come back tomorrow and be play catch up because they're going to be outgunned in the first first 60 minutes and then have to play catch up when the, the subs come running on the weak link in the Hurricanes spot I'm going to call it now is uh, Gordon Basham I think he's not not yet ready to, to take on the full full might of a quality back line and I think that's been the weak point in the whole Hurricanes side in the rugby area so that, that might be the case but also with the whole style of our New Zealanders defence mm. I think it does not it, the advantage is not for the Hurricanes because the Hurricanes are, are um, they are actually banking on the fact that they have a little Mope and uh, uh, um, Vince Arsenal, yeah. okay, which are big guys big blokes and they didn't have the chance to get the ball wide enough because the shut up defence of all New Zealand teams are quite good quite well so I think that is the problem for them, but I'm backing the, the Hurricanes in this game. I think they're going to do very well. Um, like you said, you, you, you mentioned like they're going to play a, a um, what do you call it, a catch-up game. Uh, less than seven points. Going to no, be I less think we both went six on the Super Yes, and so, and the no, average is six. Yeah. So let's just confirm that Joy Barrett can kick a ball 60 meters, because yeah. last week he did it 58. So well done. The, the Islanders will have to be good discipline because he'll punish you from anywhere. He looks like he wants to play rugby again, so hopefully he gets his chance and gets some running. Because he's not that bad. He's not. He's not. He's not voted, but mm. he's not that bad. No, no, and no, I'd no. like to see him give it a shot at the ten jersey as well, just to see what he can do with with someone like Luan Mope on on his outside. Because his brother performed well with Luan Mope on his outside, so maybe there's some lack there. Maybe, maybe. there's some. But just uh, just try some stuff because you have nothing to lose. You 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 have one win. The Islanders have one win. If it works, it works. If it doesn't. Well, it. this is like a second main event, like we said, because yeah, they're competing third for the third, third yeah, fourth player. Third they're third actually third competing third. for the third, you know, uh, spot. But now, if it works, you, you, you high risk, high reward. I and, risk, um, yeah. That's what I want to see. I want to see that. I want to definitely see that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's okay. my thoughts. Hopefully, the Hurricanes take it. No, no disrespect to the Islanders. I like the Islanders, but I just think the Hurricanes are a bit more guns. So, uh, I don't like the Islanders that much, but anyway, that, that doesn't matter. I really hope it's going to be a great game. Thank you so much for, for viewing our content. We really appreciate it. We had a bit of a, a different scene today uh, because of just uh, the way that we were at rugby today. So, that was quite, quite good. But anyway, thank you so much, really, for viewing our content. Please go hit us up on any social media platform. Tweet us your thoughts. Or even just leave the, the question of the day, your answer, in the comment section below. We really appreciate it. Hit that like button and then also subscribe if you'd like to see more of our content. And then don't forget to join our Super Brew Pool. You are not too late. There's still so many games to be played. So that will be quite good. Okay, awesome. Then we'll see you in the next video.